so I've been working, um, I would say, you know, off and on basically for the last 10 years, particularly looking at Guatemala, but also within the last year looking at Mexico as well. And particularly in, I'd say, the last uh, maybe 15 or 16 months, the, the conflict, this conflict that's killing so many people in Mexico has spread to Guatemala. And there are several reasons for that. Uh, if you look at, at the state of, of Guatemala since the 1996 peace accords uh, that brought an end to the country's 30-year civil war that killed about 200,000 people, a lot of uh, key elements of, this, of, the, of these accords were implemented quite weakly, if at all. And I think in some ways that made you know, Guatemala a perfect, uh, very fertile ground for, for groups such as Los Zetas, who are now moving south from Mexico into Guatemala to operate. Guatemala has, I would say, as complete impunity as any country I've ever reported on. And this is something that has not changed even a little bit since the end of the Civil War, uh, now 15 years ago. And uh, it also has a, an extremely entrenched and extremely powerful criminal class, criminal monarchy even, I would say, that has its links to the former military intelligence particularly, uh, that was active in the Civil War, that was trained uh, by the United States. And I've always found it very ironic a bit, like, you know, that uh, the United States would support people who would have no problem massacring entire villages of women and children, but they were shocked that they would get involved in drug trafficking, shot. And this perfect storm that, that we've had in, in, in Guatemala has particularly gotten bad since 2008. And it's particularly gotten bad, I think, because sensing the pressure that was being put on them by the Calderon government and the battle between the Calderon government and the various cartels in Mexico, which there's some debate about as well. Uh, you know, the cartel de Sinaloa, particularly Los Zetas, moved south, and they moved south particularly to the El Petén, uh, Alta Verapaz, uh, Zacapa, and Isabel in the east of Guatemala. And now, as we've seen, you know, recently with this uh, massacre of, of 27 people in El Petén and the murder and dismemberment of the fiscal, of the, um, the attorney who was charged with investigating the case, it is now a serious, serious problem that, that Guatemala will have to address. Much the same, I mean, I just got back from Tamaulipas in northern Mexico, and I'm going to Ciudad Juarez in a couple couple weeks again, where, where I've been before. And, you know, you, you have a problem there where these, uh, these criminal gangs, you can't even call them gangs, I mean, they're armies. They operate as armies, uh, with, with army-level firepower. I mean, there's, you know, there was a firefight in Matamoros between the Gulf Cartel, Cartel de Golfo, and the Mexican military when I was there, and you know the the Gulf Cartel, they have uh, flak jackets that have CDG written on the side of them, as if they're you know an army. And I, I, I think this situation, this militarization of the conflict, is is not really going to change much because I feel that a lot of responsibility lies on the northern side of the border. It lies with the United States. And why why do I say that? I say that because we are the number one consumer of cocaine in the world. And the United States, with a population of half, uh, you know, whatever half it is of Western Europe, we're consuming as much cocaine as Western Europe in the same amount of time. And by the other hand, we're also selling tons of guns to Mexico. Uh, Jaime Zapata was, a, was an immigration agent who was killed in, in, in Mexico at the beginning of this year. And the gun that was used to kill him was sold legally uh, in Texas. It was traced back to Texas. So I think. It is really time, you know, after 36,000 or however many people that died in, in Mexico in this war, and, you know, however many thousands have died in Guatemala, because they're really, at this point, I think, both different fronts in the same conflict. It's really time for the United States uh, to re-examine its position on the criminalization of narcotics and its position of firearms. And I think some politician has to have the guts to come out and say, okay, you know what, the drug war, the war against the poor, is not working. You know, I mean, I'm saying this in New Orleans to you, and we could walk, uh, you know, 20 minutes and get any drug we want. Uh, so, it's, the prohibition does not equal, you know, difficulty to, to, to acquire, difficulty to get. And, you know, some politician has to say that, and we have to stop putting people in jail for being sick, basically, which is what is happening now. We don't, I mean, some politicians said recently, I can't remember who, you know, you don't put alcoholics in jail, obviously. Uh, so I think if we're really serious about, you know, stopping this violence that's ravaging Mexico and that's ravaging Guatemala, and that I think will eventually spill over here, um, you know, we have to re-examine those two elements and, and we have to change them.